One very important concept in ggplot deals with position adjustments. So let's see what this deals with. Position adjustments. So suppose I plot this data. ggplot data equals diamonds, which is we are using the inbuilt diamonds data frame. And we are generating a bar chart, geom bar. And we are saying x equals cut. Okay, that is uh, cut is what we are doing a bar on, just like before. That is for each different value of cut, we want a bar of how many diamonds have that value of cut. And then we are saying color equals cut. Okay, so we're just doing a color. Oh, what you see is not what we expected because we thought the color of the bars is going to be what we said here. But unfortunately, what color means is not the color of the bars itself, it is the color of the outline. So if you look very carefully, you will see that the colors of the uh, outlines of the bars are actually different. Okay, let's first rectify that. Let's just say fill equals cut. And we get this. Okay, so meaning we said that the fill for each of the bars, the fill color should depend upon the cut. And the system, of course, assign different colors automatically as it always does. And then you got this. But of course, here the point is that the colors really don't make any sense. You don't need the legends here. After all, we, this itself tells us what uh, each of the bars represents. So there's really no need of a color. The color is just looking, making it look pretty. That's all. It otherwise has no meaning. Sometimes uh, when you use certain elements in charts, people may think those elements have meaning. But sometimes if they don't have meaning, it can actually be quite misleading. Okay, so uh, it's better not to use elements that seem to convey information when they in reality do not convey any information. Okay, so now let's do this. Let's say fill equals clarity. Okay, because earlier we said the, the fill was not useful because the fill was also the same variable on which we were plotting the bars. Right, so it was not giving any additional information. This time it's all right. We're saying I want the fill to be clarity. Okay, so now for each bar of a certain kind of cut, it is also telling us how many diamonds are there of the different types of clarity that exist within the database. Okay, so these are all industry terms for defining the clarity of a diamond. Okay, so now we are able to see how many of each type of clarity there are within each bar. So once again, following our initial precept, we would like to add more variables to a plot, right? So here we've got cut and the count, but we also managed to sneak in one more variable by way of clarity, okay? So now the notion of position comes into play because now this bar consists of several sub bars of different colors. Right? Because uh, there are this color here represents uh, diamonds with a certain level of clarity, probably this first level of clarity, and so on and so on and so on. And the top one represents diamonds of this level of clarity. So this is actually many sub bars stacked one on top of the other. So the position aspect comes into play when we talk about what is the position of these sub bars. Okay, so when you use a geom bar, the default positioning is what is called as stack. That is, the sub bars are stacked one on top of the other. That's what the default position is. They're all stacked one on top of the other. Now you may say, well, it's also possible for us to tell the system to start each sub bar from the bottom itself. Okay, that is also possible. And that's what we'll show you next. Okay, identity is what does that. And then there are other options, all of which we will look at shortly. Okay, so this one says fill equals clarity, geom bar, position equals identity. Right, so when you say position equals identity, what you're seeing is that all of the different bars of different colors, they all start from the bottom. That's what position equals identity means, meaning start all of them from the same place, unlike with stack where we stacked each sub bar on top of the other. How do you know this has happened? Take a look at this. Okay, so of the ideal cut, if this represented the, all the diamonds, this would not be 5,000. 
okay because we know that there are more than 20,000 of uh, ideal cut this is showing only 5,000 because we have stacked the bars one on top not stacked the bars but we have overlapped the bars okay so that's the idea so the first chart shows you uh, you know this is stack and that is why the total is showing up about 20,000 here this is really not 5,000 is not the total it's the number of diamonds of this particular color which is on top that plus the number of diamonds of this color plus this color plus this color plus all the colors that would equal this total number okay so that is how this position equals identity works okay now sometimes what may happen is when you do position equals identity it is possible that some of the bars may hide or obscure other bars okay so for example if the color that was plotted last turned out to be the tallest in any one of the bars or more bars then that color would completely obscure all the bars which were shorter than it okay and there's really no way for the system to control that right because in in one bar the color plotted last may be the tallest in some other bar the color plotted last may be the shortest okay so the system can you know uh, cannot really prevent obscuring from happening that's the important part okay so therefore to prevent that kind of stuff from happening within geom bar we have this parameter that we can pass called alpha right so what alpha does is it makes the bar filling transparent a little bit not completely transparent a little bit transparent so that you're able to see even if it is obscuring some other bar you're still able to see through it and see the other bars which are there okay and this parameter alpha equals something this controls how transparent it is okay so one fifth basically says make it such that if I put five of them one on top of the other then I will get back the original color that's what this is okay so superimpose in five will give us full opacity so I just chose this number one fifth you could have done one half also it doesn't matter okay so now when you do that you see that the numbers the things become a little more transparent and it is possible that we are able to see more colors in some of the bars okay the other option to avoid this superimposition problem is to completely tell the system don't fill the bars at all instead uh, just use the color alone which means the uh, instead of fill we are using color which means just the outline of the bar will have the color okay so here now we don't have the problem with uh, superimpositions you will still be able to see all the bars but of course this is just not uh, you know th there's not much substance in the chart substance in terms of visual substance right but it's an accurate chart and it overcomes this problem of overlapping bars okay so that's another option but in either case we have used position equals identity which means all of the bars are starting from the bottom unlike when position equals stack each bar was starting at a higher level okay now another big advantage of position equals identity is let me go back to the original chart which is let's say this chart look at the chart on the left right now here suppose you wanted to compare the numbers of diamonds of a given clarity across different cuts that comparison becomes a little difficult right that is because if all of them started from the same level you could compare and see which is taller which is not taller so for example here this of ideal you've got so much of this clarity and you've got so much of this clarity which one is bigger which one is smaller we don't know because they are both starting at different levels it becomes different difficult to compare them right whereas if all of them are starting from the bottom then you can actually compare them okay so that's that's the idea here so position equals identity you will now be able to compare them and uh, make your decisions okay so that's the other advantage of using position equals identity you can compare because all of them start at the same level okay another kind of thing is suppose you're interested not in the absolute counts but you're interested in the proportions okay then you can use position equals fill 
Okay, so now it's not telling us the counts because you see here on the y-axis it's now become 0 to 1. So it's not telling us about the counts, but it is telling us within each bar what is the proportion of diamonds of different clarities. Okay, so for example, you can see that there is a higher proportion of diamonds of these clarities, which I assume are higher levels of clarity because these are ideal diamonds than in these cases, right? So in the fair case, you see there is a much higher proportion of diamonds of uh, lower clarities. So that's, that's what it is, okay? So here, it's not as if we have equal number of diamonds of the different cuts. No, that's not the case. But this is used solely to compare the proportions and not worry about absolute numbers. Absolute numbers, of course, we've already seen the earlier chart doing that.